platforms. Uh, we have learned what Laplace transforms are. We now know how to sort of find uh, Laplace transforms for various uh, functions. Uh, now I'll go to the next part, which is essentially uh, finding what the inverse Laplace transform. Of course, I'll spend few minutes on what inverse Laplace transform is. Uh, it's very easy. It's basically Laplace transform and it's inverse. Yeah. Laplace transform is a way of going from set of functions to set of functions. Functions are the domain function, that means the functions on which L operates are functions in independent variable T and the output that is what L gives back is functions with the independent variable S. Now, inverse Laplace transform is obviously the other way mapping, which means you give me a function of S, I will give you back function of T. What is the, what is the property of this? I give you that function of T, which if you take Laplace, gives you back the original function. That's essentially what is inverse Laplace transform. Of course, here, uh, anyway, I'll, this is the definition. So definition is here, Laplace of Ft is f of s. If Laplace of small ft is capital F of s, then we say inverse Laplace of capital F of s is small ft. This is the definition of inverse Laplace. The obvious, most obvious one. If ft goes to f s, we say f s goes to ft. Small ft goes to capital F s, we say capital F s goes to small ft. That's all. That's the definition of inverse Laplace transform. Uh, of course, there are problems here. Uh, when will it exist? Is yes. uh, initially, uh, you see, when we talked about Laplace, we took a function and uh, multiplied it by e power minus st and integrated between zero to infinity to get the Laplace. Now, I'm talking of inverse. I have to be a bit more careful in the sense uh, I don't know whether the inverse Laplace transform exists. If you mean any arbitrary function? I don't know whether there is a function whose Laplace transform happens to be that given function. It's not very clear. But in this course, we will not be bothered about such niceties and subtleties. We act as if they all exist. Means the inverse Laplace transform exists. That means in your exam and in your course, we will give only those kind of functions, capital F of S, for whom inverse Laplace exists. For example, uh, if I give you capital F of S is 1 by S, means Laplace of some function is 1 by S. Uh, that must, it must be T. You know, if, uh, Laplace of T, uh, is it T or something else? Mm, no, constant function 1, sorry. So, uh, this one, let me uh, uh, collect my thoughts. Say, for example, you start with constant function 1. Laplace of constant function 1 is 1 by s. Inverse Laplace of 1 by s is constant function 1. So, in your this course, we will give you only those kind of fs's, fs, for which inverse Laplace exists. That means these are all functions which are Laplace transform of some function. Well, there are conditions on when does this inverse Laplace exist and unique. it's not unique actually. We let me not bother about such issues in this course. So in this course, we won't bother about uh, whether uh, inverse Laplace exists or, uh, for you, of course, only those functions of S for which inverse Laplace exists will be given to you. So, Another very, I mean, the very important property of inverse Laplace is the most important property of Laplace, which is the linearity. So we know when do we say a transformation is linear? Transformation means like operators like L and D and I, which we have seen. L and L of uh, even L inverse satisfies the same property. L inverse is also, inverse Laplace is also, what does that mean? It means, uh, this is what it means. L inverse of AF plus BG is A L inverse F plus B L inverse C. 
these things follow from definition and i won't spend time on those things uh, but it's maybe it's worth proving these things once on your own so the upshot is l inverse of a f plus b g is a l inverse f plus b l inverse g that means if you give me two functions of s and if you take the sum inverse laplace of the sum is sum of the inverse laplaces similarly i can pull out constant a if l inverse of a f is what i want to find if i know l inverse of f i will have found that by just pulling out a so that l inverse of a f will be a l inverse f so together as you know we have been writing this kind of notation i'll say inverse laplace is linear which means l inverse of a f plus b g is a l inverse f plus b l inverse g and uh, the way we had uh, a table of laplace transform we'll have a table of inverse laplace transform which is this what is this one laplace inverse of one by s is one laplace inverse s inverse of a by s square plus a square is sine 80. it's basically cheating this is the table of laplace transform but written in the, written in the other way there in laplace transform we are given these functions and written these are their Laplaces, like Laplace of e power 80 is 1 by s minus so. Now the same table I'm reversing. I'm saying for these functions, see I'm very clever. In these functions, I don't give any arbitrary function. I'm giving those functions which I know already are Laplace of something. This is what I meant by telling that we will act as if they exist. You won't be given any function for which, uh, for example, I will not ask you sin s. Find Laplace inverse of sin s. Not very difficult one can try doing such things but we won't ask you that because we don't know what is the function of t whose laplace is sinus we don't know we haven't come across that so we won't talk about it there in most laplace also but what we will talk about is those functions which are which have already been which we already know as laplace of some other functions so here it is here is the list and that i'll call it table of inverse laplace terms so so let me read it once. Uh, inverse Laplace of 1 by s is 1. Inverse Laplace, that means L inverse of 1 by s minus a is e power 80. L inverse of a by s squared plus a squared is sine 80. L inverse of s by s squared plus a squared is cos 80. L inverse of a by s squared minus a squared is sine h 80. L inverse of s by s squared minus a squared is cos h 80 and n inverse of n factorial by s to the power of n plus 1 is t power n where n is an integer of course n is an integer i should have written it here it shouldn't be written here because this is what is given to me so anyway mm -hmm. that. so this is basically laplace a table of laplace transform i written it the other way and told this is table of inverse laplace transform i hope you understand what is inverse laplace transform inverse laplace transform of a function is that function whose laplace happens to be whatever you start with that's what happens for example inverse laplace of 1 by s minus a is e power 80 that means laplace of e power 80 is 1 by s minus a. so this is straight and orally you know i can ask you a few questions here for example what is the inverse laplace of 5 divided by s square minus 25 5 divided by s square minus 25 so clearly that is sin h 5t because laplace of sin h phi t is 5 divided by s square minus 20. So that's what essentially inverse Laplace means. The important thing to be observing is, you see, all these functions which are here, whose inverse Laplaces I have written, as I said, I have not given here in the first column or in this third column, uh, functions like sin s or e power s and things like that, because we don't know who is whose Laplace is sin s. So what I, I know Laplace of sin t, that is not same thing as knowing function whose Laplace is sin s. Uh, so we don't know that. So, so what do we know? We know these are all 1 by s, 1 by s minus a, all these you see, they are quotients of polynomials. That means, for example, take this, this is a, this function is a by s square plus a square. That means numerator is constant polynomial, constant a. 
Denominator is a polynomial a square plus a square. Take this. This is numerator is the polynomial s. This is polynomial of degree one, and this is denominator is polynomial of degree two a square plus a square. So everything even this you see this is constant n factorial. And constant means you fix up some n. And denominator is the polynomial of degree n plus one. So every term here is a quotient of polynomials. That means you take two polynomials and divide one by the other. Not arbitrary polynomials. You have taken specific polynomials. So a by a square minus a square, s by a square minus a square, one by s minus a, one by s. One by s is also quotient of polynomials. Numerator is a polynomial, constant polynomial one, and denominator is a polynomial s itself. It's a monomial of degree one. So these are called rational algebraic numbers. You must have uh, uh, rational algebraic functions. You have all uh, in your high school. You must have learned what are rational numbers. The rational numbers, you will recall, rational numbers are those numbers which I can write as quotient of two integers: two by three minus five by six. Um, 100 divided by uh, minus 273. Uh, basically, quotients of two integers. Uh, that is what is called rational number. Similarly, here I'll call rational algebraic functions or rational functions, which are quotients of polynomials. Instead of integers, I have polynomials. When that it's very large, means the uh, uh, Algebraic rational functions are very large in the sense there are too many of them. I'm not really bothered about everything because, for example, if numerator is s cube minus a cube, I don't know what to do. But they are all rational functions, rational algebraic functions. So I am interested only in algebra, rational algebraic functions, and I want to talk about their inverse Laplace transform. Not all, only these standard things which, are, which you can see on the uh, on your screen. Now, of course, their combinations also will come. That is what finding inverse of class of various functions. Maybe an, an example or two will help. So last, uh, uh, Laplace rational, uh, uh, oh, sorry, Laplace transforms are rational algebraic functions. I hope you understand what it means. It just means that you see whatever you see in the first column here. These are all Laplace of some function. These are all quotients of polynomials. That's all I'm trying to say. This thing I'm saying in a fancy language, saying that they are rational algebraic functions. Rational algebraic function means quotients of polynomials. That's what I just told you. So whenever I had algebraic quotients of algebraic functions, uh, rational algebraic functions, I have one technique called partial fractions, and I use that to find the uh, inverse of functions. What does it mean? I'll explain. I think I should have jumping a bit. I should go slow. Let us go slowly. Let us find first, as I told you, orally I can ask you find what is the Laplace transform of uh, uh, something s by a square minus 100. s by a square minus 100. So I'll say a square minus 100 is same as a square minus 10 square. So this is, I want to find the inverse Laplace of s by a square minus 10 square, which happens to be cos hyperbolic 10t. Because Cos hyperbolic 10 t uh, Laplace transform happens to be s divided by s square minus 10 square. These are very straightforward questions. I'm sure you understand that. Now I want to deal with functions which are slightly more complicated. They're not as directly as uh, in the table. So here is an example, easy one. Three s. I want to find the inverse Laplace transform of three s cubed minus five s squared minus two. The whole thing divided by s power four. So clearly, this is not in, like I don't know. A priori, I don't know any function whose Laplace happens to be this. Because look, uh, if you see the table, Laplace of various functions are like this: one by s or one by s minus a by s squared plus a square s by s squared plus a square a by s squared minus a square s by s squared minus a square n factorial by s to the power of n plus one. Now, not what is given here is doesn't look like that. This is like three s cube minus five s square minus two divided whole thing divided by s power four. So I want to bring it to that form in which I can 
find inverse Laplace. So I will, uh, you, the only one thing I know about inverse Laplace is that it is linear. So somehow I have to use that. So I'll rewrite this in the following way. So 3s cube minus 5s square minus 2 by s power 4 is, I break up this fraction. This fraction, um, uh, but uh, no, multiplication, uh, addition and uh, subtraction distributes over division. Uh, don't bother all these fancy terms. So this is nothing but 3s cube divided by s power 4 minus 5s square divided by s power 4 minus 2 by s power 4. That's what I written here. P s cube by s power 4. Uh, s cube will get cancelled and I'll be left with an s in the denominator. So 3 by s. Similarly 5 by s square. Similarly minus 2 by s power 4. So now uh, Laplace inverse of left hand side of this. The plus inverse of this is same as the plus inverse of this. The plus inverse of this is same as the plus inverse of this. So how, how do I find the plus inverse of 3 by s minus 5 by s square minus 2 by s power 4? I use the linearity, which means this is same as the plus inverse, inverse the plus of each term in the usually. The first term is 3 by s, second term is 5 by s square, third term is 2 by s power 4. To each one, I will want to find inverse the plus easily. Inverse the plus. How do I find that? That I know inverse Laplace is of course uh, you know, linear. So I can pull out the constants also. So this is nothing but 3 times L inverse 1 by S minus 5 times L inverse 1 by S square minus 2 times L inverse 1 by S power 4. Now do I know Laplace inverse of 1 by S? Yeah, of course I know that is nothing but constant function 1. Do I know Laplace inverse of 1 by S square? Yeah, of course I know it is T. Laplace of T is 1 by S square. Do you know Laplace of 1 by s power 4? No, oh, I do know Laplace of 1 by s power 4. But I know Laplace of 3 factorial by s power 4. That is pq. So if I want a 3 factorial here in the numerator, I just uh, multiply and divide by it. So divide by 3 factorial. So I am left with a... So what I will do is, I will divide 2 by 3 factorial and push one 3 factorial inside a linear. So... 2 twice L inverse 1 by s power 4 is twice 2, two by 3 factorial into pq because you see how do I check this just take a plus of this this is one function 3 minus 5t minus 2pq by 3 factorial if I take a plus of this what will I get I get 3 into a plus of 1 the plus of 1 is 1 by s so I get 3 by s yeah that's what I get here. now this is 5t. So Laplace of 5t is 5 times Laplace of t. What is Laplace of t 1 by s square? So 5 by s square. Yeah, that's what I get. Now 2t cube by 3 factorial into t cube. It's Laplace. So I'll pull out 2 by 3 factorial into Laplace of t cube, which is 3 factorial divided by t, uh, s to the power of 4. So I'll get 2 by 3 factorial into 3 factorial divided by s power 4. 3 factorial because it gets cancelled and I'm left with 2 by s power 4. Now that's what I have. So this is correct. So basically what I do is I'll push in the cons, I'll pull out the constants and then push in the constants whatever I want to make this uh, uh, make this appear as it comes in table of Laplace transforms. This is a standard trick. Just I'll give you one minute go over this slide to make sure that you understand every step here. What this says is to give me a long expression like this, I can break up this expression and find inverse Laplace of each term using linear transformation, using linearity property. Uh, and then I will make sure that each function I get here is one of the ones which appear in the table of Laplace transforms. So then I can very easily find the inverse, I can easily write down inverse Laplace transform. That's what I have done. Let us look at one more example. Uh, I hope this is clear. This just says, I'm just using linearity of inverse Laplace transform and uh, exploiting whatever already existing uh, table of inverse Laplace transform, which is basically table of Laplace transform. You don't even have to learn anything new. So let us try one more example. This example says, Find inverse Laplace. This example asks for finding inverse Laplace transform of 1 by s square minus 3s minus 4. 
clearly this is not in the standard form. 1 by s square, let's see, if you go and see the table of uh, Laplace transform, you don't see such a function, 1 by s square minus 2s plus 3 or something like that. So I don't have such an expression. I have only expressions s minus a or s square plus a square or s square minus a square or just s power n plus 1. This is a funny kind of, uh, not funny, it's a new expression. 1 by s square minus 3s minus 4. How do I find the most Laplace of this? The philosophy is the same thing. You go back and ask, uh, what did you do in case of when you found a function whose Laplace had to be found? Of course, to use linearity, you always ask this question. If I wanted to integrate this function, how would I do? Do the same thing here. That means, if you want to find the inverse Laplace of this, think how would you integrate this? Use the same method. So this is 1 by s square minus 3s minus 4. Do you recall how would you integrate this? From your class 12? What you would do is write the partial fractions of this. Because the, basically the problem is this is a quadratic in the denominator. So I don't want that. I want only linear terms in the numerator, uh, denominator. Numerator doesn't matter. Denominator, I want 1 by s minus 4 or some constant by s minus a. But this is not s minus a, this is s square minus 3s minus 4. So what do I do? I change this. What do I do? I change this so that I get only linear term. But only linear term, you can't get only one term. You get two terms. That's how you integrate it, right? We called it uh, finding partial fractions or find the, write the partial fraction of this uh, expression and then you integrate it. That's what we will do. So we need to write this as a partial fraction, which means I need to factorize the denominator. I'm sure you've done it in your class 12, but if you have forgotten, which is very likely, uh, I'm giving you the details of how to write the partial fractions. Uh, so I need to factorize the denominator. Whenever you're trying to write an exp a fraction as a partial fraction, uh, you uh, find the factorization of the denominator, which means s square minus 3s minus 4 is same as s minus 4 into s plus 1. Right? So I need the two numbers whose product is minus 4 and sum is minus 3, so it is minus 4 and plus 1. Correct. So s minus 4 into s plus 1. Uh, and now is the step, which uh, I hope you will recall quickly. 1 by s square minus 3s minus 4, I'll write it as a by s minus 4 plus b by s plus 1. One, I'll write a, a some number constant. I don't know. I'm trying to find that. Uh, basically, what I'm saying is I'm going to break up this given 1 by a quadratic into 1 by some constant by a linear term plus some other constant by a linear term. That's what I'm trying to do. Because these terms, if I know a and b constants, I can integrate this. I can find Laplace and some of these. So that's what I'm trying to do. This is the trick of partial function. This is basically an algebra trick. Now, <clears throat> how do I find a and b here? 1 by s square minus 3s minus 4 is a by s minus 4 plus b by s minus 1. How do I find that? Clearing the denominators. That means you multiply this, this expression is true for any s. This 1 by s square minus 3s minus 4 is equal to a by s minus 4 plus b by s plus 1 is true for any s. So, which means I can, of course, it's not equal to minus 4 and 1 in this case because it's not defined for this values. But anyway, that's not the point. Uh, this is an identity, which means I can multiply this by s minus 4 into s plus 1, the whole equation. If I multiply this whole equation by s minus 4 into s plus 1, on the left hand side, I'll, they'll get cancelled and I'll get 1. I'll read here. And on the right hand side, a into s minus 4 plus 1 by s minus 4. So s minus 4 gets cancelled. I get a into s plus 1. So and the last term, b into s minus 4 because s plus 1 gets cancelled. And basically multiplying this whole thing by s minus 4 into s plus 1. Uh, so remember this. This is 1 is equal to a into s plus 1 plus b into s minus 4. So basically, I'll get two equations in A and B. We equate the coefficients of S. A plus B plus A minus 4B equal to 1 for all S. 
I put s equal to 0 and things like that, you will get two equations. That is one way of doing But I will propose an easier way. Uh, so like same thing, actually, it's not different, but uh, easier to run computation. So this equation you take, whatever that equation, uh, 1 is equal to a into s plus 1 plus b into s minus 1. This is what we are trying to find. We are trying to find inverse Laplace of this. In the process, I am trying to break this up as partial fractions. For that, I took the denominator as uh, factorization and wrote it as a by s minus 4 plus b by s plus 1. Clearing the denominator, I got 1 is equal to a into s plus 1 plus b into s minus 4. If s equal to minus 1, you will end up b is equal to minus 1 by 5. Because if you put s equal to minus 1, you see what happens. If you put s equal to minus 1 in this equation, this will become 0. So a into 0, so this term will vanish. And if I put s equal to minus 1, I'll get minus 5b equal to 1, which means b is equal to minus 1 by 5. Similarly, if I put s equal to 4 in this equation, b term will vanish. This will become 4 minus 4 0, so this will go. And I'll get 4 plus 1, 5a equal to 1, which means a is equal to 1 by 5. So I found a and b, which means this was my expression 1 by s square minus 3s minus 4 is equal to a by s minus 4 plus b by s plus 1. Now I found a is 1 by 5 and b is 1 minus 1 by 5. So I have substituted them. So I want I could break up this given 1 by a quadratic as sum of 1 by some linear plus another. 1 by a linear with a constant multiple that's okay constant multiples i'm never really worried because l inverse is linear that's what i'm going to use i want to find laplace inverse of this that is this which means laplace inverse of this which means i'll write that laplace inverse of 1 by s square minus 3 s minus 4 is laplace inverse of 1 by 5 into 1 by s minus 4 minus 1 by 5 into 1 by s plus 1. now i use linear so laplace of this minus uh, sorry, not Laplace. Laplace inverse of this minus this is nothing but Laplace inverse of this minus Laplace inverse of this, which is what I have written here. Laplace inverse of this minus Laplace inverse of this, but I will pull out the constants 1 by 5. So Laplace inverse of this, I know. What is Laplace inverse of 1 by s minus 4? It means you have to think of a function whose Laplace is 1 by s minus 4. What is that? What is a function whose Laplace is 1 by s minus 4? We know this e power 40. You remember e power 80 has inverse uh, has Laplace 1 by s minus a. So here it is of the form 1 by s minus a, s minus 4 here, a is 4. So it's inverse Laplace is e power 40. And 1 by 5 constant is also. Similarly, for the second term, inverse Laplace of 1 by s plus 1 is e power minus t. So these last things follow from we call it table of Laplace transform or table of inverse Laplace transform, both are same. So this is this is how I find inverse Laplace of a slightly more complicated function, which is not same as directly what it would come as uh, um, this function is not directly coming in uh, from uh, the table of Laplace transforms. This one by s square minus three s minus four. So instead of that, what? So how did I? Let me recall. What did I do? One function, I broke it up into fractions in such a way that Laplace inverse of each of the terms are easy to find. It is one of the standard uh, functions in the table. I hope it is clear. Just to go through this once carefully because this is essentially this is the main technique which you learn in this course for finding inverse Laplace. So if I want to find inverse Laplace of this, I will write this as a partial fraction, which means I need to write the factorization of the denominators. So here is the factorization of denominator. Then I can write the given function as sum of two terms, each term looking like this, a by s minus 4 plus b by s plus 1. And if you clear the denominators, which means you multiply the whole thing by s minus 4 into s plus 1, I will get an equation two equations in two variables, the equate coefficients of s on both sides, which is same thing as saying you substitute s equal to minus 1 and s equal to 4 one after the other in this equation. So if you put s equal to minus 1, you get b. Similarly, you put s equal to 4, you get a. And together, 
I will have what my expression 1 by x square minus 3s minus 4 is equal to whatever is given here. Now the advantage of this is I know how to find Laplace of each term on the right hand side. Uh, this really use linearity of inverse Laplace which is this. Uh, so one more step where I pull out the constants. Here I just used the sum Laplace of sum is sum of the Laplace. And then here I pulled out the constant and then I write down the standard function. That's about it. It's as simple as that. As far as uh, ending in your problems. But a lot of your trouble will come how to break it up into partial fractions. Well, let us see some more examples. That's the only way to understand this. Because theoretically, you have all already done this in your class. Here. You don't know inverse Laplace, but you have broken up given fractions as partial fractions. So I, this is more of a recall of that. So let us see. Uh, find the inverse Laplace transform of 3s by s square plus 2s minus 8. The same story. I need to write this as a partial fraction. How do I write it as a partial fraction? Again, we need to find the factorization of the denominator. Uh, so here is the factorization of the denominator. s square plus 2s minus 8 is equal to x plus 4 into x minus 2. Basically, I need two integers two numbers whose product is minus 8 and sum is plus 2, so 4 and minus 2, so that's it. So then I can write 3s by x square plus 2s minus 8 as a by s plus 4 plus b by s minus 4. I'm sure you understand, you know, you can write a by s minus 2 plus b by s by 4 and you get the same answer, a and b are interchange. So I use of a and b are interchange, it's the same thing. And clearing the denominators, we get this 3s is equal to a into s minus 2 plus b into s plus 4. That's what it is. 3s is equal to a into s minus 2 plus b into s plus 4. So in this, you put s equal to 2 to get b equal to 1. If you put s equal to 2, this term will go to 0. And here 6b is equal to 6, which means b equal to 1. Uh, and then in the next expression, you put s equal to minus 4. So here I get minus 6a is equal to minus 12, which means a is equal to 2. So then I can write 3s by x squared plus 2s minus 8 as sum of uh, these two uh, reciprocals of uh, linear terms. 2 by, s plus, 2 by s plus 4 and 1 by s minus 2. Now, as in the previous case, the advantage of this is that I can find easily Inverse Laplace of both the terms. How do I do that? Use the inverse Laplace transform is linear transformation. So inverse Laplace of 3s by s square minus 2s minus 8 is Laplace inverse of 2 by s plus 4 plus Laplace inverse of 1 by s minus 2, which means 2 I can pull out in the first term. In this term, I pull out 2. So I get an inverse of 1 by s plus 4, which is e power minus 4. So I get 2 e power minus 4. Here I'm going to pull out. So it is e power 2. So this is the answer. This is the inverse Laplace of this function. If you want you can verify. Take Laplace of this. What is Laplace of this? Oh, I know this is 2 by s plus 4 because 2 into minus 4 divided by, no, no, not minus 4. Uh, 2 into 1 by s plus 4. That is the Laplace of e power, 2 e power minus 4. e power minus 4 to Laplace is 1 by s plus 4 multiplied by 2 so 2 s plus 4 and here Laplace of this is 1 by s minus 2 so you add these two that I know I'll here if I add these two I'll get this that's what I checked that's how I got this 2 and 1 uh, so it's actually I'm just cross checking it so so you can check that Laplace of this is this that is why inverse Laplace of this is Plus of 2 e power minus 4t plus e power 2t is 3s by s square plus 2s minus 8. How do I know that? Just do it now. Usual Laplace, how would you find Laplace of this? To do it, you will get this. That's what the reverse process of this problem is. So let us see some more examples. That's the only way to sort of become more familiar. So every time it's the same thing. You have function. Of course, if I, I will not do very bad functions here for your exam. Or even to understand it because you should be able to break it up into partial fractions somewhat easily. And what after breaking up, you should know how to find inverse numbers. That's how it is. So let us do uh, here is a slightly more complicated example. Mm, 
this is two s square minus six s plus five divided by s cube minus six s square plus eleven s minus six. How do I even go about this? Again, same thing. Numerator degree is two. Denominator degree is three. I don't have a standard function whose <coughs> Laplace is this. So I'll try to break it up into some partial fractions. To how do to break it up into partial fraction? What do I need? I need to factorize the denominator. This is not a square a quadratic. How do I factorize this cube? It's a bit of a headache. It means cubic uh, factorization is not very easy. But in your exam, you get a cubic. Don't be scared because uh, it's an artificial kind of example. Arbitrary cubic, I do. It's not easy to factorize. But in your exam, they will definitely give you a cubic for which factorization should be easy. You, you, you have to work a bit this side, that side, but it will be easy. So let us try to see how to guess that. Let us see this cubic. Let us study this cubic. S cube minus six x squared plus eleven s minus six. When you see this, you see a very symmetric kind of nonsense. So here is minus six and here is minus six. Here is eleven s and here is x cube. Somehow, uh, the mathematician in you should pick you to recognize this. The moment you see this, you see if you put s equal to one, this will become zero. Minus six, minus six, minus twelve. If I put s equal to one, this will be one, or this will be eleven, and this will be one. S cube, one cube is one. One plus eleven is twelve. So my twelve minus twelve is zero. So what I'm trying to tell you is, s equal to one is a root of this uh, cubic. Means if you put s equal to one, this will become zero. How did I know this? Just recognize it. Means you have to just look at the symmetry of this uh, polynomial and uh, deduce that. So these things come only by practice. It cannot come just uh, out of nothing. So I know s equal to one is a factor of this. You must know your remainder theorem. S equal to one is a root of this. That means s minus one is a factor of this. S minus one is a factor of this means I can divide this by s minus one and get an expression. If I divide this by s minus one, this is a cubic, and I'm dividing by a linear polynomial, I'll get a quadratic. I get a quadratic, then I know how to factorize it. You know the roots of a quadratic. You know minus b plus i one plus b square minus four c by two. So that is one way of factorizing this. So observe that one root is easily guessed, and the other two roots I get it by dividing by dividing this denominator by s minus that root. That is another way of finding. Uh, I have not written down these details. These are something which you must have done in your PUC. Uh, but what I will do here is I'll cheat you. Uh, I will see that this you observe that one is a root of this. I say similarly you observe two is also a root of this. How do I know that? It's again experience. Two cube six two cube. Uh, if I put a equal to two here, this will get two cube minus six into Uh, uh, two square. So six into two square is uh, four into uh, six minus twenty-four. So eight minus twenty-four is minus sixteen plus fifteen. So two. Oh, sorry, plus eleven. Uh, mm -hmm. Wrong. So if I put it into two, this will get eight. 8 minus 24, which is minus 16, plus 22. Uh, what I said is equal to this will be one two. So minus 16 plus 22 is minus 6. No, plus 6. Sorry, plus 22. I'm doing something wrong. 8 minus 4, uh, 6, 12, 24. 8 minus 24 is minus 16. That's correct. Minus 16 plus 22. Ah, correct. Let's see. 22. This is 22. So 22 minus 16 is plus 6. 6 minus 6 is 0. Correct. So s equal to 2 is also a root. Yeah, it's not very really easy to observe this. You know, after knowing that 2 is a root, it took me few seconds to realize to show you this. So people expect you that you know you'll be able to come up these things on your own. And similarly, you also have to observe that three is a root of this. 
So best thing is to mug it up for your exam if you want. Otherwise, you have really a lot of practice to see this. That speed minus 6x squared plus 11x minus 6 has 1, 2, and 3 as root. Or, as I told you, the shortcut, you know, s equal to 1 is a root, then divide this by long division, s minus 1. Divide this denominator by s minus 1 to get s squared minus 36x squared plus 11x minus 6 as a product of s minus 1 into something. That something will turn out to be s minus 2 into s minus 3. You should go home and do that. I will not spend time on that. I will have done it down here. If it is noted that 1 is a root of the denominator, carry out long division to get the other factor. This kind of thing you will have done in your class 9, 10, or 10 years. Otherwise, you just directly observe that 1, 2, and 3 are roots of this denominator. So I can write factorization of this as s minus 1 to s minus 2 to s minus 3, which means I can write my uh, given uh, fraction whose inverse Laplace I want to find as a by s minus 1 plus c. I want to find a. So it is the obvious. What is the obvious? The denominator, and you will get some value. In this so if you multiply both the sides by s minus 1 by s minus 2 by s minus 3, uh, left hand side will be left with a square minus 6 s plus 5, and on the right hand side you will get a into s minus 2 into s minus 3, because s minus 1 will get cancelled. There s minus 2 will get cancelled, so b into s minus 1 into s minus 3, and plus c into S minus 3 will get cancelled, so I will have S minus 1 into S minus 3. Now, with this, this is an identity, it means it's true for all S, which means I will try to find values of A, B, and C by choosing S cleverly. So, what is our cleverness here? Put S equal to 2, then you see A and C will, terms will vanish. If you put S equal to 2, of course, I know this will vanish because this is after all, uh, no, no, sorry, this is not vanish. Put S equal to 2, you will get some value here, some number 2 into. 2 square minus 6 into 2 plus 5. Why do I have to choose 2? Because if I choose 2, this term will vanish, a term will vanish, this coefficient of a will vanish, and similarly, coefficient of c will vanish, coefficient of b will not vanish because it is multiplied by s minus 1 into s minus 2. So, when it is equal to 2, I will get 1 into minus 1. So, minus b I will get here and I will put s equal to 2. So, uh, if you put s equal to 2, you get b equal to minus 1. Similarly, if you put s equal to 1, you, you see these two terms will vanish. I get a. a is equal to half. You have to carry out these kind of substitutions. I have done it and I hope I have done it correctly. If I have not done it correctly, follow my method and I am sure you will get the answer. Many different. If I am wrong, these, answer, these numbers will be different, but these will not be different. This is what I want you to do. Similarly, if you put s equal to 3, the first two terms will vanish and I will get the value of c to be this. This means uh, my given uh, fraction whose inverse Laplace I am trying to find. Now I have broken them up, broken it up into three um, terms. Each term is a reciprocal of a linear term. If I have a reciprocal of a linear term, I know how to find inverse Laplace. That is the whole purpose of doing all these things. So, inverse Laplace of given function is inverse Laplace of each of the terms. So, each of the terms I know I can find the inverse Laplace and I have done it down here. I am sure I have done the mistake here. Half into e power t because Laplace of e power t is 1 by s minus 1. The same thing as saying inverse Laplace of 1 by s minus 1 is e power t. Similarly, here inverse Laplace of 1 by s minus 2 is e power t. And the inverse Laplace of s minus 3 is e power 3 t with a factor of 5 by 2 object. So, this is how you do. You see, this whatever you see in this slide is essentially what is uh, you are learning now inverse Laplace transform in your third semester. But all these things are what you have already learned in your class 12. Uh, this partial fractions business, how to do, how to get it into partial fractions, and this is something you have learned in your class uh, 9 or 10 when you did your uh, remainder chart. How to factorize a given uh, polynomial. If you know one of the roots, if you can guess one of the roots, then you can get the other roots. It's not true always, but yeah, uh, as I said, for your exam, you get only that kind of polynomials. So I hope it's clear. Uh, most hard, a lot of our effort goes into doing what we have to do, what we did already in our PUC or high school. This BE3 is very easy. 
This inverse Laplace is linear operator, which means I can break up uh, this into this. And then each term I know there is a table of inverse Laplace function. This part is easy. Where you uh, struggle is what you already knew before. So let us try one more example. This is a slightly different example. Again, of course I'll use Laplace. Uh, partial fractions so let us see you know how to do this so again it's the same method which means uh, i have this plus i want to find the the plus of this i want to use this is not a standard thing if i want to use uh, partial fractions how do i find partial fraction of this you observe that a square plus nine i can't factor this if i had a square minus nine it would have been life would have been easy i could have written a s plus three into s minus three and i know the factorization of this then i can write it partial fractions very easy mm, but here purposely it's given like a square plus nine that means this is a quadratic term which you cannot factorize over real numbers I mean, if you really forcibly factorize it will be s plus three i into s minus three i where i is complex number but i don't want to get into the plus times one with complex numbers right now so how do i do this so this is the way you, uh, and then again you think, go back to your uh, PUC class and uh, try to see how would you integrate this, again you would do the partial fraction. How would you do a partial fraction with a quadratic term in the denominator? So numerator must become a linear term, linear previously, previously means when the denominator is a linear term, numerator is a constant, when the denominator is a quadratic, numerator must be a linear term, the general linear term is ds plus c is the uh, s, uh, power is one and its coefficient can be anything plus a constant that's what it means so s square plus 2 s minus 4 divided by s square plus 9 into s minus 5 is a by s minus 5 plus ds plus c divided by s square plus 9. Uh, so i want to evaluate abc then i will be it will be complete means if i can find the abc then i know how to of course even then it's not very obvious, but it's reasonably easy. How to so let's first do this much and then go go step first. I hope you understand why am I doing this. See, if I find A B C, I know Laplace inverse of this, then this I'll break it up into two parts B S by S square plus nine plus C by S square plus nine. C by S square plus nine, I know Laplace inverse Laplace because this is like some sign something, you know, from constant uh, S square plus A square. And this is some cos kind of Laplace. B S divided by S square plus nine. S by S square plus three square. I know how to find inverse of S square. So basically, if I can find A B C, I'm done. Anyway, don't worry if you didn't understand. I'm, I'll show you the details. So here it is. So you, by clearing the denominator, that means you multiply by S minus five into S square plus nine. Uh, I will get. A into S square plus nine. I written it in I written this way. Left hand side here as right hand side, and right hand side here as left hand side. I'm sorry. Uh, it's the same thing, but uh, don't get confused. All I'm done. All, all I have done is uh, multiplied this by S minus five into S square plus nine. By doing that, I'll get on the left hand side S square plus two S minus four that I written on the right hand side, and on the right hand side here I'll get a into s square plus 9 because s minus 5 will get cancelled so a into s square plus 9 and bs plus c will be left with s minus 5 because s square plus 9 will get cancelled so that's what i have done here on the left hand side a into s square plus 9 plus bs plus c into s minus 5 is s square plus 2 s minus 4 so essentially the portions of the light powers you are done I'll use if you put s equal to y for example plus c vanishes means this term will become zero so this term will become zero and I'm left with uh, if you put s equal to 5 here this is uh, 25 plus 9 34 times a is equal to you put the value 5 here it's a pretty bad, bad number and looks like I have done it and 31 by 34. I hope I not made any mistake please check this this part is correct this part you should check once I have I think that and, and similarly uh, the next part, second part, you see now you can't choose one value of s for which only b value you will get. So you can't do that. So what you must do is equate the power 
parts of x square. What are the parts of x square? You get one x square from a, a x square. And here I'll get it from b x square. There's no other square term. So a plus b x square is equal to um, one x square. That means a plus b is one. I already know a that one that you got. So b is three by four. Assuming this is correct, then this is correct. And how do I find c? I'll just uh, uh, constant term. You see, it is a nine a minus five c is equal to minus square. And I know this, so I find this. So, uh, it's a dirty computation, so I'll not do it. I mean, I've done it, but I'm not going to show you the details. I hope uh, I'm correct. I leave it to you to verify this. So, in any case, A, B, C, will be some numbers. So, I written those numbers here. Mm, S square plus T S minus 4 by S square plus 9. It's inverse Laplace. It is inverse Laplace of this. A is 31 by 24. So, 1 by S minus 5 plus B, 1 by 24. Uh, B is actually 3 by 34, but 3 are taken it in here. S plus C is 83 by 34. I written them together. It's a square plus 2 by a square plus 9. How do I find inverse Laplace of this? Now use linear D. So inverse Laplace of both, both these terms. Uh, inverse Laplace of this plus inverse Laplace of this plus inverse Laplace of this last term. This last term means I'm breaking up this term as 3s by a square plus 9. 3 by 34 into s square plus 9. Another term is 83 by 34 into s square plus 9. That's what I have done here. So I have pulled out those constants 83 by 34 and 3 by 34 and here 31 by 34. And remaining is L inverse of 1 by s minus 5, L inverse of s by s square plus 9, L inverse of s by s square plus 9. Uh, both can be correct. This is not s, this is 1. I'm sorry. We were typing instead. So let me correct it right here. This is what I said. I might make these kind of mistakes. You please correct them. This is one. This is not. So this is what we get: so 31 by 34, 1 by s minus 5, 1, 3 by 34, s by s square plus 9, 83 by 34, 1 by 9 s square plus 9. This is correct. So assuming this A, B, C are correct, I could have made mistakes, so please check that. Anyway, I can write A, B, and C here. Something about some number. A times Laplace inverse of 1 by S minus 5 is e power 5t, Laplace inverse of S by S square plus 9, I know this cos 3t. And Laplace inverse of 1 by S square plus 9, I know this. You see, uh, multiply by 3 square and divide by 3 square. Sorry, multiply by 3 and divide by 3. We get 3 by a square plus 3 square, whose inverse Laplace is sine theta, so 1 by 3 remains outside. So, this is the standard trick which we did before also. So, same thing we are uh, doing once more. So, essentially, this horrible looking function, its inverse Laplace is this. Uh, it's a bit tall order to verify this. That means you take Laplace transform of this, whatever is on the last line, Laplace transform of this should be turning out to be this. You can go home and check, and I think I am correct here in numbers. Oh, I will not verify this. So check most of your work went away in finding out the uh, partial fraction of the given function. So a lot of your time goes in that. So be familiar with that. What you already done in class there. Then this you know, surplus finding you know, surplus function is very easy and it's trivial. Trivial means it's very easy. It's not difficult. Uh, so that's what I'm telling. Essentially, one needs to know well on how to break rational algebraic expressions into partial functions. If you know this, then you have a bit uh, shape. Uh, let us do one. Uh, sometimes some ingenuity like sort of CU3 uh, without actually resorting to partial fractions. So I'll show you one such uh, example before I am almost at the end of my time, just five minutes left. So uh, before I end up, I want to, before I wind up, I want to uh, explain this. Uh, find inverse Laplace of s plus 2 divided by square minus 4s plus 13. Observe that the denominator here, uh, it's not the factorizable in the usual way. You see, b square minus 4ac, b square is 16, minus 4ac, 4 into 13 is uh, 52, 16 minus 52 is definitely less than 0. So you can't, they don't have real roots at all, both are complex roots. So, you can't factorize it in the usual, I mean, you cannot factorize it unless you use complex numbers. I don't want to do that. 
So how do I find uh, Laplace transform such things? Again, go back to your class here. How do you integrate this? You would always use some easy uh, integrations. Sorry. You will always use some easy manipulation so that this concept can be something easily integrable. So similar thing you have to see. You have to observe that here you see S plus 2 is there, but not very important, but it is some linear term. And here S square minus 4s plus 13. Uh, somehow can I get some square and a constant here? Yes, I can do that. 13, if I break it up into 9 plus 4, 13 is 9 plus 4. So I'll write it as 4 plus 9. If I write it as 4 plus 9, I'll get a square minus 4s plus 4 plus 9. S square minus 4s plus 4 is nothing but s minus 2 whole square. So denominator, I can write it as s minus 2 whole square uh, plus 9. So we will not try out partial fashion as the denominator has complex. So I already explained to you. Instead, you observe this. This is what I just my observation was. S square minus 4s plus 30 is nothing but S minus 2 whole square plus 9. All I did here is I observed that this has S square minus 2as, where 2bs, where b is 2. So b square, if I add, that means I get 4 and I subtract 4, which means 13 minus 4 is 9. So that's what I had it here. And this 4 got absorbed here. Or you can think of breaking up 13 as 4 plus 9 and push that 4 into this and 9 you return as it is. So, in any case, you see this observation. S square minus 4s plus 13, S minus 2 whole square plus 9. Very good. What do I do with this? Is this a standard form? Not yet. But I can make it look like a standard form. What do I do? I break this up into S by S minus 2 whole square plus 9. So, this is what I do. S minus 2, uh, what am I doing? This is, uh, yeah, this is correct, but uh, what I written is correct here. Yes. 2 I written as 4 minus 2. So I written this. Uh, why do I do this? Because I want, you see, I want to observe that if I break up this as S minus 2 divided by this plus 4 divided by this, then I have the same term here, S minus 2 and S minus 2. And here, no term and S minus 2. So I know inverse the plus of such things. So this I can write it as S minus 2 divided by S minus 2 whole square plus 9 plus 4 by S minus 2 whole square plus 9. Now, inverse the plus of this I know. You recall? So whose, if you want to find inverse the plus of this, means you want to find a function whose Laplace is this. Now, whose Laplace is this? Yeah, there must be some cos 3t. Yeah, cos 3t. The cos 3t is s by s square plus 9. What about s minus 2? Ah, I know there is a shifting rule. So e power a t. So e power 2t into cos 3t, its Laplace is this. So inverse Laplace of s minus 2 by s minus 2 whole square plus 9 is uh, e power 2t into cos of 3t. I hope it is clear. And uh, that's what I have done here. So Laplace also, okay. similarly for this also, if I, uh, you remember e power, uh, Laplace of e power a t f t is e, uh, 1 by, uh, not 1, f, capital F of s minus a, where capital F is Laplace of small f t. So here small f t is sign 3 t, so you just try to build backwards, I think I'm running short of time, yeah, I'll quickly wind it up. So, uh, uh, Laplace of sin 3t is 1 by s square plus 3 square. 1 by s square plus 3 square. But I have s minus 2 here. So, it will be e power 2t into sin 3t. Uh, but I need a 4 here. Uh, not 4. 4 is already there. I need a 3 here because it is Laplace of sin 3t is 3 divided by s square plus 3 square. So I'll multiply and divide by 3, so that uh, outside three, outside denominator 3 will remain here. Numerator 3 gets absorbed into the Laplace. I hope it is clear. Uh, I think I'll stop here. Next part is a new convolution. I'll uh, continue with the uh, next class. And uh, thank you for your uh, attention. And I hope uh, I made it clear to you.
uh, basically you must remember you need to know how to break up things into partial fractions that is the important upshot of this uh, takeaway from this lecture is you should know how to break up fractions into partial fractions learn that well you'll be able to find the plus and so on please for your examination thank you for your attention